This is Dr. Charles Parker, and you're listening to Core Brain Journal. It's a place where I connect both fresh discoveries and interesting different perspectives from advanced mind science with the realities of real people and everyday life down on Main Street. Well, welcome, folks. Here we are one more time at Core Brain Journal, and we're welcoming a very interesting guy today. Uh, Dr. Richard Ruling, and he's going to talk to us about a variety of issues, not the least of which is how we can integrate mind, body, and spirit in our recovery program. So, welcome aboard, Richard. Nice to have you with us. Good to be with you, Charles. Thank you so much for this privilege. It's an opportunity. So, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Ruling, folks. He's a retired physician who is board certified in internal medicine and was an assistant professor of health science at Loma Linda University, where he was responsible for, get this, executive health from 1974 to 1978. He attended cardiology meetings and heard Pritikin speak, I'm looking forward to hearing about that, on reversing cardiovascular disease with a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet, Uh, and that particular diet was a turning point to actually see that Hippocrates was right when, when he said, let your food be your medicine. So he later co-authored a book called Why You Shouldn't Ask Your Doctor. That sounds provocative. And we'll have a PDF, which is going to be at corebrainjournal.com forward slash 049 download called America is Gone. That's also another very interesting and uh, provocative title. So Richard, tell us a little bit about your personal life, where you are and what you're doing now. Well, well, I'm really retired. Uh, My former wife died of a prescription drug reaction living in the D.C. area, and I remarried in Arizona. Uh, So that it's a real switch, basically, but happily married uh, six years now. And um, uh, people would not uh, imagine that uh, drugs, prescription drugs, could be so dangerous, but I went through the U.S. Senate while I was living in in the Maryland, D.C. area with uh, medical literature to show that, the and this is a website that I have, leading cause of death, prescriptiondrugs.com, until one senator said, you know, you're wasting your time. They own us. Speaking of the pharmaceutical uh, company's donation to their re-elections. So uh, bottom line is that uh, they're sold out unfortunately, and uh, we're, we're, a lot of the issues coming out of Washington are just uh, um, play the game, you know. So that's one of the big reasons you want to be out spreading the word, talking about uh, issues that are really deeply personal for you, the death of your, your wife's death. Correct, but uh, I, I uh, am a little bit jaded in what we see in America with the Hillary situation, and uh, my recent book that you alluded to, America's Gone, first chapter is uh, uh, why Hillary goes free, you know, <laughs> because, you know, uh, there's there are some real issues there. But uh, and I didn't mean to talk, bring this up necessarily, but I just say uh, this is for real. There's a lot of truth we can talk in any dimension, but uh, maybe we'd like to go back and start at the, uh, at the School of Health where I was at and the health issues. Yeah, that would be good because uh, you did some training in Africa. Let's go back and talk about, did you actually go to school in Africa or what happened with that? No, my intent was to be a missionary and go to Africa and friends said you'll do more good if you'll take public health. So I, I took a year of public health, but while I was there... The, the opportunity did not materialize, and so I, and the dean liked me, and he said, you know, we want to have a very progressive program. We'd like to train doctors of health, not doctors to write prescriptions, but uh, how, how people, if they just don't feel well, what, what can they do? And uh, so, but he, he needed me qualified, so I took internal medicine. I had a year of cardiology, and uh, it, it was a very good background for me to see wh- uh, what's happening. You mentioned the Pritikin program, and, and I've had experiences. I'll just give you this one example. Um, I, after I left the, the uh, university, I went into practice and then uh, later moved to New York, where in, in the New York City area, I had an executive who had three cardiologists. And he was taking a dozen pills a day. I don't mean a dozen prescriptions, but a a total of a dozen pills. And he was getting worse. He couldn't walk two blocks without severe chest pain. And uh, 
but he came to a seminar that I gave on, on the Pritikin program, and um, his cardiologist said, you know, if you do, if you do what you're, he's saying, you'll, you'll die. Well, I think he outlived the cardiologist <laughs> because he lived to be 93. This, this was back in the, in the uh, uh, um, 1983, 84, okay, that, that he came to my seminar, and he lived till uh, just a couple uh, years ago. So bottom line, uh, yes, it works, and, and, and he did get off all his prescriptions. So, <laughs> so one of the things you did in your medical career as a cardiologist was to present information about nutrition as it related to cardiovascular disease and, and the Pritikin program. Um, yes, and actually a person doesn't have to buy Pritikin's book. Uh, currently, I have a, a DVD that uh, if people need a little motivation, and it's an excellent DVD, I'll just tell you, I, I sat across an alumnus from my uh, college university where I uh, attended before I went to medical school who lost his eye to diabetes, but he got off his, his uh, insulin and other prescription with a certain DVD, and I, I got a copy, and now I, I buy them by the hundred at a time, so I get a break, and I sell them for $10 on the internet, but it is excellent because it's not only uh, uh, heart disease, it's blood pressure, it's uh, it's um, uh, diabetes, it's cancer, it's osteoporosis, it's uh, overweight conditions, etc. Uh, so if, if they, oh, and, and if they want to get this DVD or if they're interested, they can see five minutes. On, I have on my website richardruling.com, and ruling is spelled with an H, R U H L I N G. They can see this DVD and see a little bit of it, and it, it, it shows Bill Clinton's cardiologist. And Clinton, uh, you know, he used to do the Big Macs, but he he can't do that now. But anyway. Um, I'm not was, promoting Clinton. Was his um, car, was his cardiologist Esselton? Is that true? yes, it is Esselstein. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you you're probably a big fan of uh, uh, Michael. Uh, how come I'm Gregor? Talking? Yeah, Gregor. I mean, I'm yeah, blocking on he is now. good. Yes, you're good too. <laughs> Thank you. You're very knowledgeable. Yeah, so he's uh, that's my current favorite nutrition book, How Not to Die. And, yeah, <laughs> uh, and he is so good on yes. the audio. I mean, if you listen to it on audio, he's so doggone interesting and funny. Because it, he's got humorous. He's got yeah. tongue in cheek, but he just keeps stating fact after fact after fact. <laughs> yes, and he's and he's good. It's sort of long at Pritikin. In fact, I think he got his start with uh, Pritikin. So did Ornish, I think. Yeah, uh, in the mid '90s, the Ornish got cover, the cover story on U.S. News and World Report about can we reverse heart disease. But uh, sadly, Pritikin didn't get any coverage. He didn't get any help. But it's nice to see other people coming forward now. So, did you actually then practice cardiology, or were you practicing uh, more of a conservative evaluation, nutritional medicine practice? What, were you, what was the nature of your practice? The closest I came to a cardiology was that the uh, I was in charge of treadmill stress testing at Loma Linda, and we had 10 treadmills that we would put on a van, and we would do like the California Dental Association, a couple hundred dentists in a day doing treadmill stress testing, and I was responsible for that. But uh, I never really practiced highbrow cardiology. Uh, I, I learned some of the cath stuff in, in uh, Good Samaritan Hospital in Phoenix when I had a fellowship in cardiology, but never really practiced it. Just uh, general medicine generally. And by the way, um, before we leave the School of Health on this topic, uh, I had one, car one executive tell me that uh, sugar bothered his joints. I had another tell me that cheese bothered his joints. Yeah. And I had another one tell me that meat bothered his joints. And my point is out of this, these were smart guys and they'd figured it out. But most people, they just get a prescription. And when this prescription, suddenly they get a problem, they have to change prescriptions, you know. But they, still, they don't solve the answer. But uh, if you know what's bothering you, and I have to say, I, it's not always easy because I had developed headaches while I was there and could not figure it out. I didn't, I didn't know. It didn't seem like I ate something and got a headache. But when I left the university and I went into practice with five other doctors, one was an allergist, but it was a side stream of allergy. It wasn't the mainline stuff. And uh, I learned, and I asked him one day when uh, the parking lot was usually filled for this guy, and I said, how many people with uh, 
headaches can you help? He said, oh, about nine out of 10. <laughs> I said, test me, please. And he did. And he told me several foods like um, wheat, toast, uh, pastas, pastries. I loved them. I'd probably been abusing them. And uh, I didn't think they caused my headaches because I didn't get a headache when I ate them. But when I left it out, no more headaches. And uh, the bottom line is the way it works, it, it, uh, if you become addicted to a food, a pro uh, allergic to a food, it develops an addiction syndrome, kind of like nicotine. And when people smoke, they don't feel bad. They feel good when they smoke. But if they try to quit, they get symptoms. And that's I've the way that a lot. I'm, I'm, to I'm totally ahead. with you. I've seen that many times. We see it. We okay. see it happen with milk. We've seen it happen with eggs. We've seen it happen with wheat. And what happens? Whatever the problem, yes. Just keep right on going, and they get tied up with it, and then getting them off, it winds up being they're actually at opiate receptors with milk that are uh, in the in the document yeah. in the literature that throw a person into an opiate. Of course, is what heroin and oxycontin. They are hitting opiate receptors, and they're not. Perhaps the same. I don't know the details on that uh, neuropharmacology, but they are opiate receptors, and people do have withdrawal when they stop whatever the food is, and they go through, in a way, a kind of a food Herxheimer reaction as very they, good as yeah. they fall apart going off of it, and then you have to figure out a way to support their metabolism while they're actually withdrawing from the food. Very good. I appreciate your being so knowledgeable because this is an area that most MDs do not, they don't understand it. Well, I do it because I came in the back door with yeah. psychiatric treatment failure. You know, oh. my, my canary in the coal mine is the brain. I mean, good, and good. I've yeah. seen, <laughs> the brain will tell you a lot. Yours may be the body or the heart, and I think the heart and the brain are very closely related, but we've seen people where I was very well trained in psychopharmacology and doing the psych meds exactly well with a patient who's highly motivated, listening to what I was saying and, and working with me. But, you know, treatment failure is treatment failure, even if you think you know what you're doing. So then you have to dig more deeply. And that's why I got into uh, the metaphor that I use is w what I found myself doing is resuscitating the canary in the coal mine as opposed to looking for the methane. <laughs> <laughs> mouth That's to mouth great. on a canary doesn't work too well. Yeah, yeah, right. So anyway, back to it. So then your your mission there now, what were what one of the things I think is so interesting for our listeners to to personalize this conversation is what difficulties did you come up to that actually changed you and actually caused you to drive more deeply into these kinds of uh issues that are a little bit off the trail of the beaten path, what, what changed you in that regard? Well, that's a good question, and it doesn't have an easy answer. Uh, I um, was in pretty much in traditional medicine uh, in California, but went back east to one of my students who wanted me to come back and do treadmill testing. He wanted to do uh, racquetball clubs and things like that. And I developed a, a health seminar at that point to try to help uh, lifestyle people to learn how to eat better. And uh, this was really a challenge and interesting to me because I felt with Pritikin's information, I had the answers to the heart heart problem. Uh, this was, uh, oh, 35 years ago, you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and But it, uh, it's New York City is really tough as nails. And, and uh, unless you have it really slick, it doesn't fly. So, and I didn't have it that slick. But I... I um, uh, was challenged, and it, it's been a, a long road of, of growth. Uh, and uh, but I do see, like you quoted uh, Hippocrates, that food can be the best medicine for for the uh, um, health for the body. But I'm seeing that the same is true for the mind. Uh, what we feed our mind is uh, for mental health, and a lot of people are feeding their mind garbage. Uh, you know, if you if you think about uh, from a biblical perspective, whatever is true and honest, lovely, good report, think on those things, and everything we get is just the opposite. It's fiction, and it's uh, uh, bad news type stuff. You know, it, it doesn't thrill you on the news, evening news, if it's not really bad. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're in a negative situation here. Well, it is. Uh, th there are problems out there. Take, it take us back to where you were in New York because I was right there with you, with your student who was asking you to do treadmills. What caused you to drive more deeply 
into the issue, it sounded like you were going to go kind of beyond Pritikin as you started to move in that direction. Well, um, first of all, I'm trained as a physician, and to do the seminar-type stuff uh, on the side or in the evenings, and my wife wished that I would just, uh, you know, do the medicine and earn the money and let her spend it, you know. So family issues developed uh, in which she she left me <laughs> because I was not as supportive uh, of the family, uh, although I, I was a better dad, I thought, you know, playing racquetball with my kids and so on than, than my dad was with me. So I didn't see any big trouble coming right away, but uh, it was big trouble when she left. <laughs> and I, I um, then went, when she moved south and I went down to the south and, and it was a different perspective trying to relate somehow. Um, I did not win her back, but that was all right. Uh, it was a lessons to, to learn. And uh, I, I was challenged in, from the, you know, we've talked now physical and the mental. I was challenged spiritually because I felt I understood the, uh, the health aspects but uh, the Bible is a bigger challenge to understand, and I, I believe that I, I'm seeing a lot of stuff that's relevant to today. So I, I, I never, uh, you know, I, I did remarry, and that wife died from a prescription drug, so I'm on my third wife, but happily so for six years now. And uh, uh, the, the issues of, uh, of, you know, I, I think just like heart disease is the number one they think it is. I, I, I'm saying on my website, it's really not number one. Uh, prescription drugs is, the, is a bigger killer, and I could cover that, but we're running out of time maybe. So bottom line uh, is that, that uh, the, spirit, the, health, the mental and the spiritual are more challenging and more interesting. That's where our suffering is. You know, heart disease is just a a typical of, of spiritual heart disease, uh, that we got the wrong kind of desires and we're into too much that's, uh, that's not really real, etc. Yeah, so what you're saying, I'm going to translate it a little bit because okay. one of the things uh, from a more generic uh, perspective is, that's valuable in spiritual practice, and this may minimize it a little too much for you, and I don't mean to, uh, to do that, but the issue is having a more... Um, transformational, larger picture view, uh, transcendence, the word I'm looking for, a more transcendent view of the bigger picture as opposed to just gratification, sugar, salt, uh, you know, all those things are tied up with the food that, that Pritikin is talking about and, and, and fats that are just going to be appealing. I mean, those kinds of things uh, would be approached differently if a person had a more transcendent view and actually thought about the bigger picture. What you're talking about in a larger perspective is the bigger picture of what's going on in our lives and how we either take care of ourselves or we don't. Yes. I appreciate your ability to summarize, and transcendent is a great word. <laughs> so then, what's the next step that you took in terms of applying transcendent uh, perspective in your own life? Did you change your practice, or did you change what you were doing with yourself personally? And did you change the way you work with patients? What happened there? Okay, when I went to Chattanooga, which was where the area where my wife moved to, uh, and I was trying to relate to her, I, I uh, got a job with DuPont, and it, it worked great for a while. Uh, but their medical director had to move on. They wanted to know if I'd make it a, a career with them, and I said no, so they, they pretty soon found someone else to replace me, but I worked there for six months, got good uh, income, but then uh, trying to do the health thing, you, you know, it's kind of like people will pay for pain uh, and see a doctor now, but uh, to, to, to go to a seminar, uh, not everybody's going to pay 150 to, to attend a, a, a series, even though it was, you know, in fact, I had one guy from Amended Hearts Group who's, who told the, the class that, you know, if you go to Dr. Ruling's seminar, you'll get about the same information that you'd go out to Pritikin Center out in California and spent $6,000 there. So I was giving good stuff, but uh, it's just hard to get people to come for 150. So uh, I I uh, ended up kind of limping along medically, but uh, challenged uh, in a spiritual dimension uh, when I went to a prophecy conference and I uh, heard them talking about stuff that 
I'd never heard of before, even though I had a good Bible background. You don't, you know, you go to church and it's it's about 52 different ways to slice the same bread, you know, but it, it doesn't, it does not, the diet doesn't change a whole lot and you don't learn a whole lot, really, it seems like. It's just kind of uh, nice and interesting. But anyway, uh, I think we're, we're the the churches are not addressing the issues, and and I'm seeing stuff that I think in prophecy is important for now, but uh, it, it's 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 not out there for most people. So do you? It sounds like you then went through about three or four significant changes, one after the other, in terms of how to be really blunt about it, how you were going to make a living. Because yeah, you were. It didn't sound like you had a practice. It sounded like what you were doing was teaching and and uh, and 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 being paid to teach and bring people along with really understanding these healthy intervention systems. Let let me share a little word picture with you uh, from a Bible standpoint. Uh, in Matthew twenty five, there are uh, ten women that go to a wedding and they all go to sleep. But when they wake up, five are ready. They have enough oil. Five don't. And uh, I was uh, once telling a my professor that I worked under at Loma Linda, the, where I was in in the university teaching. I said, you know, there are two sides to the coin. And he said, no, there are two sides and an edge. And I applied that same principle to the wise and the foolish in the parable. There was a, a group of wise people, a group of foolish people, but there's also a voice that wakes them up. And I decided I'd like to be part of the voice that wakes people up. So, so that's, you're on that, the edge. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> it's not black and white. It's the edge that pulls it together. I hope so. That's an interesting point. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's a definite coalescent metaphor. You're, yeah. you're going to take a little bit of both sides and try to bring everybody together and, and, and make some peace. Well, uh Sometimes you're there a little early before it's time, and, and people are not quite ready for that. But I think the things that are happening in America are, are uh, relevant to the point where we're soon going to wonder, uh, wh wh where did it go? You know, because this is not the same America I grew up with. You know, things are different today, and, uh, you know, uh, and, it can, and it could go uh, south very quickly. Well, we could get into politics because it's a political time, no question about it. Every day is another big surprise. So, but let's stay with with our audience if we can and say, okay, what good. would be your perspective as a medical professional who's been in an evolutionary chain in his own life for many years now? What would be the message that you would take to our listeners regarding uh, that union of mind, body, and spirit. What would you say they would need to do to really keep their mind balanced well? What should they do with their body? And what's what's a good spiritual practice from your perspective? Good question. Thank you, Charles, for asking it in that way. Um, I, I believe that there are many good self-help groups, and, and the, the, the granddaddy is Alcoholics Anonymous, and people go to it. They, got, they get good help. Unfortunately, they sit around and smoke while they talk about the evils of alcohol. But uh, the, the concepts of, uh, you know, realizing that we're powerless over some substance and turn our lives over to God as we understand them is excellent. And I'm not denominational. I'm not trying to push that at all. But I believe that that's where it's at, whether it's overeating or sex or gambling or uh, drugs or who knows what. I believe God can help us if we're really serious. And I have a a uh, website that uh, with a book which uh, is I think that I heard another woman pathologist who was a graduate of Emory she and her husband her husband was an internist they were both atheists but when they came across this book and read it it changed their lives and uh, the, the book sounds almost too biblical it sounds it's the, called the ministry of healing but it's about health and happiness and it has a chapter on the mental aspects of it uh, called mind cure but uh, it's mental attitudes and uh, 
on on the website, I, I can't remember. I think it's five dollars. You know, and that almost well, there's a little postage, I guess, too. Come to think of it, but the idea is excellent book, and the website where they can get this book is called uh, ChooseABetterDestiny.com. ChooseABetterDestiny.com, and the, that that pathologist said it's the book best book ever written because it changed she and her husband, but it also changed me and, and affected my practice. And uh, it's, it's exactly uh, uh, Clive McKay of Cornell University, a former professor of nutrition, reviewed the author and said there's no better overall guide in the field of nutrition. So really very solid stuff, uh, not uh, denominational, but Bible oriented. And I feel like most people don't get enough. The Bible is the best seller, but it, it's very hard to read the Bible. And uh, this is a book that's, um, that's good. You know, if you only had one book in the Bible, there's Genesis, there's Exodus, Leviticus, which would you choose? Well, this is one book, but it's got a very broad perspective on the Bible that's not denominational, and it's how to live well, healthy, happy, and uh, etc. So I would say uh, that would be the, the best thing to pull them all together in my mind. That's great. Now, as we're winding up here, we're running out of time, but we just wanted to okay. say you, you had a good summary there about some things that a person could do to move forward. You're recommending this book. I wrote it down. It's going to be in the show notes at uh, Core Brain Journal 049. We'll have that for our uh, listeners there because I'm, I'm taking the notes. The next thing is let's just end with where we can go, where people can go to your site to find out more information about your mission, where you're going, and, and what you're currently doing. Well, uh, bless your heart. Thank you. Uh, the the one that has the uh, the DVD on diet also has an ebook that uh, I have written called uh, the Alpha and Omega uh, Bible Code, and uh, it has mostly five stars. If people have an interest in the Bible, they're amazed to see that Daniel and Revelation are relevant to now. And if they go to my webpage, RichardRuling.com, they can they can do that. You know. So uh, that might be the best single website. I have. I mentioned the other one, ChooseABetterDestiny.com, uh, for, for the other book, but it's a hard copy, and, and I can do that too, either way. I'll send you a link. If you send me those links, I'll put them in the show notes. Okay. And as we're winding up, remember, folks, that uh, Dr. Ruling has the America is Gone ebook P in PDF. It's going to be downloadable from... Uh, corebrainjournal.com forward slash 049. So if you're interested in a coalescent idea that pulls together uh, mind, body, and spirit, um, I'll, I'm sure that that book will have uh, a lot in it. I haven't read it. I mean, that uh, PDF have a lot in it. I haven't read it, but that's the theme of what's going on with Dr. Ruling's presentation today. You know, Charles, I've, I've had a lot of interviews and been on a lot of talk shows, uh, mostly radio or computer, but not, not TV. But you are, I would say, the best interviewer I have had. I really appreciate you. You've you're, you got a lot of breadth and your ability to summarize and pull things together. I appreciate it. Thanks. You're very kind. Thanks for coming on, and maybe we'll do it again sometime. Thanks for listening to Core Brain Journal. We're working every day behind the scenes to bring you reports that connect research benches with those street trenches. Here we share the complexity of mind science because as you know, details really do matter. One of the most pervasive misunderstood challenges is how commonplace medications like those written for ADHD are used so regularly without clear guidelines. If you think you'd like more specifics, take a minute to download my two-page PDF packed with video links and references on the absolute essentials of how to start ADHD medications. They're easily available at corebrainjournal.com forward slash start. Thanks for listening. Do connect and stay tuned. Together we can make a difference.